defending her doctoral dissertation oh. again. <laughs> so Jessica Chobot is here! Hey, Aw, thank you. We're coming at you live from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. I didn't do my P90X this morning. I was oh, oh, I thought I was you were getting my lunges today. in. No, I'm not being regal. Uh, on the show today, director Brett Ratner will be here live. He's going to talk about his new indie flight tower heist starring newcomers Eddie Murphy and Ben Styler. I don't know, maybe it'll do good. And we've got some cool tricks to try with the iPhone's new operating system, including text shortcuts and custom vibrations. Because the iPhone is magical and full of secrets, like the other things I keep in my pants. <laughs> Plus, in Gadget Pod, we'll play with the iHome's new iPod dock that's Did Jessica Chobot? I'm a sneaky one. Then Chris Gore celebrates a very Harold and Kumar Christmas by talking about getting high with the cast of the new comedy. <laughs> getting high in the holidays. Two flavors that taste great together. Beautiful. Time. Just, can, camera one, can you spin this way, just real quick, just this way? Oh. Can we, no, hold on, real quick. And then I don't know if you can see in the back. Three dudes all in plaid with their arms crossed. Oh, oh no! Oh, they moved and broke it <laughs> just randomly. Did you guys plan? Great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. Good eyes. I didn't Which even know. Which one's no evil? You guys are. You guys are great. Just good to see you out here, everybody. Everybody's down here today. It's the Attack family. The plaids have it. <laughs> okay, that's that ran its course. And now it's time to run down the top five things on the web. Let us go around the net. You know what's an awesome idea? What is an awesome idea, Kevin? Possibly trying to recreate the movie Cloverfield with a giant spool? Perhaps. Look, смотри, чтоб да, на меня катилось. Во, во. Бля! Did he say spoolia? <laughs> the Russian word for spool is spool. Oh my god. Right? Whoa. Incredible. There is no spoon. Spool. <laughs> and the winner is gravity. Yes, the losers are that guy and his camera. And his ruptured spleen, which likely had to be removed by a team of doctors and his duodenum, which was replaced by a bendy straw. Uh. And his testicles, which exploded upon impact and just began seeping all sorts of juices and what, I mean, imagine a bunch of that's grapes good. in a microwave that's good. No, that's and just hard. put it no, on there, cool. sensor detect. And you don't even cover it with a towel, it just shatters on the glass. I and don't you're like, even... lady, get the Windex, I can't clean up that grape. I don't even have nuts and you're making me want to throw up a little bit. Oh. Yeah. Surprise, I don't have nuts. Oh, <laughs> There and went our e-block tease. <laughs> contemporary, <laughs> contemporary dance routines can be kind of pretentious, even when accompanied by Pink Floyd's classic power ballad, Great Gig in the Sky. Yes, but thanks to the Belgian dance company Peeping Tom, we've discovered that a dude using another dude as a skateboard, it's pretty compelling. Because he was stomping pretty hard on the back side. Yeah. You're just wondering, like, what are you exactly stomping on? It, at least now we know what became of the Jabberwockies, right? Oh. oh. Remember those guys? No? Oh. Okay. Nice backside dude grind. 
Yes, which is which the backside dude grind is a skater move, by the way. <laughs> it's also a felony in like six states, but it's a pretty sweet skater move. The violin. It's a difficult instrument to play, is it not? Yeah. Oh, yes. Boy, have we struggled collectively as a people to play this thing. <laughs> but it's capable of producing some of the most beautiful sounds in all of music. Unfortunately, the person in today's number three item chooses to take the instrument in a slightly different direction. Hmm. Here's Lisa Haley, the so-called chicken fiddler, what? with her unique take on the classic Chuck Berry rocker, Go Johnny Go. But seriously, why did we watch that? I have no idea. Absolutely no reason. It has nothing to do with the chicken fiddler curse that strikes dead anyone who watches that video. Wait, wait, you mean the curse that can only be averted by making other people watch the video, right? Yeah, that curse. <laughs> and at number two, meet the happiest dog ever. By the way, that was great chicken violining. That was really nice. Curse the audience. We had to get to that. But that was very good chicken by Lenny. Appreciate that. Listen, the next time you complain about stubbing your damn toe, remember this thing. to kill him. He just doesn't have the front paws to do it. No, it's like having a pet bunny and a pet dog all in one thing. It's fantastic. That is a violation of, of all that no, is holy. No. You cannot combine la, la, those two things. La, 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 he was la, la. trying to hop towards the light. <laughs> the headlights of an oncoming car. He wants you to take him away no, he does not. from he, his existence. He wants me to cuddle I'm him. I'm telling you. Hold him and love him. All I right. would. Still ahead. That's disgusting. It's Star Wars versus Marvel Comics. Yay! The greatest fanboy match. the Rebels' greatest triumph over the Galactic Empire even 30 years later. But today, yeah. that struggle is made brand new. Yeah, that's because George Lucas's cute fur-wrapped midgets have been introduced to the Marvel Universe's Green Goliath with predictably angry results. Choo-choo! <laughs> That is easily the furthest I've ever seen an Ewok thrown. <laughs> Is this something you see a lot in your, in your daily travels? Yeah, quite a bit. Every year on my birthday. What? Yeah, I yeah. Check it oh out. Oh my god, that's, yeah. that looks like an awesome party. It was a lot of fun. That's sweet. 
I only do, I only can throw them a couple yards. Though, That's all that you need, good. though, right? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you yeah. still get the thud and the satisfying laughter. Oh, and they definitely make noise on the way down. Oh, so good. <laughs> good. I'm totes there next time. Yeah, come over. Hey, listen, to get your daily viral fix and to check out all the. Oh. That was a completely unexpected noise, telling us to look over there for the bit. Hi, Kevin. It's me, Candace Bailey. Candace, what do you want? What's up? Just a friendly reminder. Make sure you turn the lights off in the studio before you leave. Conserving electricity is cool! I beg to differ. But make sure you leave one light on to keep away the studio ghost. Lights, got it. Maybe you should actually listen to it. Okay, her. I don't need two ladies talking right now. Kevin, I cannot stress this enough. Do not turn off all the lights. Got it! Hologram Candace, turn off all the lights! Jeez! Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, hey guys. No! Now I am free to harvest the souls of the living innocent. <laughs> uh, studio ghost! Yeah! How is it so bad? Right? Guys? Jess? Throw plenty of gingerbread in the oven, a very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas, as 3D so real, you might get the munchies. Watch out! Ah! This time around, the boys must rekindle their friendship and the marijuana to find the true meaning of Christmas. I don't smoke anymore. What? I just felt that a lot of times when I got high, things would go really wrong. So... Oh! Some might say this is the definitive pot comedy that defiles Christmas, but at its heart, isn't this also a romance? Uh, you're the best at describing this. Well, I, I have... Romance. I have... Uh, bromance denig denigrates then what we're trying to Then call it a romance. Do. It's a romance. It's a romance between Harold and Kumar, and, yeah. and at the end of every movie, they must kiss, they must embrace, and they must fall back in love. You guys are like a gay couple, but without the anal. That's fair. Wouldn't you say? What a fascinating way to describe up. it. Incredibly accurate. Yeah and poetic. You're like Robert Frost. Exactly like Robert Thank Frost. You. Do you kill two of my trees in one night? Hold on, Harold, that is a perfectly salvageable tree. Ah! Harold and Kumar Films is nothing sacred. Apparently not. No, I don't think much is sacred in this movie at all. I mean, I get a in heaven, for Pete's sake. Yeah, which is reason enough to want to go to heaven. That's what you're telling me. Jesus. Christ, I practically run this place. Oh, for reals? I mean, my dad owns it, but I'm kind of number <laughs> one. You're one of those. People say that marijuana is uh, a gateway to drugs. Is 3D a gateway to marijuana? But wait, isn't marijuana a gateway to things being in 3D? And isn't really that mushrooms? I recommend that you go see the movie on mushrooms. <laughs> Your penises play a big part in this yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Both of your penises. Sure. I think you could do claymation porn. Well, that's very flattering. It's actually made of clay in real life, which is why they had to do the claymation scene. We're claymated. Awesome. You recreated possibly one of the most delightful scenes from A Christmas Story, but you did it in possibly one of the most horrifying ways. Oh my God, this is like that scene from A Christmas Story. How did this happen? Oh, is it? Is it like the scene from Christmas Story? We had to make that room super duper cold, then we had to lube up John Cho's penis a little bit, and we had to wait for it to freeze to that pole for real. And we had sort of, you know, the meds there on set in case something horrible happened, like foreskin was ripped off the penis. I should probably answer that again differently. Ah! I'm sorry, dude. Oh! Just walk it off. Now, let's be serious for a moment. What is the best narcotic to give a topper? Well, I would say that, like, the Benadryl, but I have to say Rufy's. What are you doing? What? My daughter's in there! What? <laughs> All children are already kind of on amphetamine, which is the way I was raised, and as you can see, I turned out fine. My mother used to take the limes out of her gin and tonic, and she'd just give it a light little thing, and then just put it right in there. Um, what were we saying? I get the munchies. <laughs> I just want to say, I am also gay for yeah. Nice. Nice. I, I, that's not much of a question. Jen's and my answer is well played, sir. I thought 
thought you were gay. I am gay. Gay for that. Go see this stoner movie on Mushroom. Because you know the ushers and the movie the ticket takers are going to be like, oh, these kids are all smoking pot. Uh-uh. Some of us are going to be shrooming our balls off. A wildly inappropriate holiday film, a very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas, taking pot shots at drug abuse, race. Kumar. Sorry, I don't date black guys. What? And religion in the third dimension. Mmm, sacrilicious. A device that means you never need to dock again. Unless you got a boat. You do know what docking is, right? It's a D and a D, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. You've got to be tired of having to dock your iPod just to listen to some tunes. Well, thanks to the all-new iHome IW1, docking is a thing of the past. With built-in AirPlay capabilities, you can stream music from your iPhone, iPod, or even iTunes right to the iHome speakers. You can be sure it's going to sound great, too, thanks to specially tuned tweeters and woofers that deliver high-performance audio wherever you go. Fill your home with music with the iHome IW1 AirPlay for only 300 bucks. <laughs> that house is going to crumble. Ah, c'est la vie. We've been waiting a while, but Apple has finally let AirPlay free. Oh, they love it. Come back. Other manufacturers are now starting to release AirPlay-enabled products. Mm -hmm. This is iHome's first entry, the IW1. Would you look at it? Check it out. Just look at it. That's the first thing I would Check do is out. just look at it. So knowing that, what do you think of the design? Uh, here's the thing. Aesthetically, smooth lines. They look great. It's got an aluminum rim along the bottom. Nice little touch. Uh, on the top, there's a series of high-gloss capacitive touch buttons. They're only visible when the unit has power. Uh, and the touch panel is extremely responsive. It always registers your finger taps or slides of that little volume bar Ooh. along top. The button layout is interesting. Uh, you actually have to flip a main power button on the back of the device mm -hmm. and then hit the power button on top to actually turn the device on. It's reminiscent of the old, oh, hit power button behind your computer and then the button in front. Why would they um, do something like that? Great question, Jess. I wish someone would have asked that maybe in the design phase. <laughs> that would have been cool. I feel like they're like, it needs more buttons, and someone just sneezed a bunch of buttons onto the device. Like, that's good. <laughs> Bam. Good look. Um, there are also two Wi-Fi indicators on this thing. There's one on the back, so your wall knows if it's Wi-Fi connected. <laughs> and then there's one on the top, which tells you what the button on the back says in case you don't believe it. That was a funny joke. Thanks. I liked it. Ah. Good job. All right, it's portable. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> It's portable with its own rechargeable lithium battery. Was it a feature that you found yourself using? Uh, actually, more often than I expected. Um, uh, I think we found ourselves forgetting that it was portable. Sort of uh -huh. like, oh, we, we plugged it in and that was that. But it doesn't look like it's something that you can tote around your house. No, it doesn't until you take advantage of the snazzy handle. Ooh. What up, world? Just cart my tunes. <laughs> <laughs> Works both ways. We uh. make fun. But that handle is something we would complain about if it wasn't there. Oh, totally. We would spend yeah. five minutes bitching about the oh, lack absolutely. of a handle on this device. But it has it. And the charging station, I don't know if you saw it, because you might have missed it right there. That's a teeny tiny little guy. The battery lasts for 10 hours, which is good. And it's a little curved adapter right here that the uh, iHome just sort of squats over, which is not the prettiest way to describe <laughs> a docking. It's going to hover over and just... Drop a charge. Now, did you find that AirPlay was easy to set up? And I guess more importantly, did you find that it worked? Two very different questions. Uh, iHome offers a free app that actually makes setup relatively easy. Okay. Uh, you, sele you select the network that you want to connect to, and then all those Wi-Fi indicators will light up <laughs> and let you know which device it was connected to and if it was successful. Um, if you've ever used AirPlay, you know that it can be finicky at best sometimes. There are latency issues where when you press play, you have to wait like three seconds for music to start wirelessly transmitting like magic. Jerks. And we found, we found this model to be much more reliable on networks with less than two routers. So if you're in an area with a lot of congestion or more than one router, it's going to have connection problems. I actually lost okay. connection to it a couple times here in the studio, and we only have mm, one main router. That's a bit of a bummer. Well, yeah. when it is working, how does it sound? Pretty good. It sounds all right. At mid-volume, it, it sounds okay. When you, when you get it on the higher end, there's definitely distortion. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, the higher end is not like turning a nice home theater system up to 11. It's not nearly that loud. Um, it comes with Bon Jovi. I mm. want to say Jovi because it sounds more funny that way. <laughs> but I wish but it was Bon Jovi DPS. I'm just saying it is. Uh, which essentially, it's a, a, like a dynamic equalizer. So what it does is it changes the highs and the mids. It, it changes the power to those frequencies mm -hmm. based off the music that it's playing. Oh, that's um, nice. 
I didn't notice a difference in my testing, oh, to be honest. Like, that's I, not nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I just didn't. But you know, again, I, I could probably spend more time with this and notice mm -hmm. that you know my classical sounds a little different than my country. The only two genres I listen to. Um, <laughs> it's not. Why did I pick those two? Um, it's not the <laughs> loudest thing in the world. But if you have smaller rooms that you want to fill with sound, this will handle it well. All right. Well, you can get the iHome IW1 with AirPlay built in for only 300 bucks mm -hmm. on Apple.com. What are we rating it? A three out of five. We like the visual design of it. The sound was decent at medium volume. The audio dropped out a lot more than we would have liked it to, but at this price, it makes for one of the cheaper AirPlay-enabled speaker systems on the market, so it's worth checking out. I like it. That's it for today's Gadget Prawn, but if you have a gadget you would like to see us rate, email us at gadgetprawn at g4tv.com. Okay. Still ahead, Apple has figured out why the iPhone 4S's battery life sucks. What? It sucks. But will they fix it? <laughs> oh. I don't know. Sarah Underwood has the details in the feed. And later, Tower Heist director Brett Ratner will be here live. And in the spirit of the movie, I'm going to steal his wallet. I'm doing it. He'll understand it. He's a good guy. Dry hump a protocol droid at a party just one time, and now no one wants to date you? You know what? That's over a year ago. I'm past it. Get past it. Galactic Encounters. All the news you need to know. The feed. 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 Hey guys, I'm Sarah Underwood, as if you already didn't know that. It's Thursday, November 3rd, and here are your top stories. A bunch of iPhone 4S owners have noticed that their battery life has been absolute crap. Now Apple has finally confirmed the issue and plans to do something about it. There have been multiple theories on what was causing the new iPhone to drain itself in a matter of hours, from the phone's hardware to an issue with location services, but Apple told All Things D late yesterday that, quote, we have found a few bugs that are affecting battery life and we will release a software update in a few weeks. And that was it. Until that update comes, just keep on charging, I guess. The 23rd Bond movie is finally a go, and now it has an official title. Skyfall. Whoa, okay. The film's producers also announced the finalized cast. Daniel Craig will reprise his role as 007, and he'll be facing off against No Country for Old Men actor and professional creeper Javier Bardem. Jarhead director Sam Mendes will make his action debut with a record-setting $230 million budget. Shooting starts Monday, and you can expect to hear Zana Zana in November 2012. Yay! Uh, one of the problems plaguing the developing world is lack of access to technology and reading material. The solution? Airdrop a bunch of tablets, of course. The One Laptop Per Child organization says they're going to distribute their solar-powered X03 tablet to remote villages around the world by just dropping them from a helicopter. They plan to simply abandon the tablets, which will be preloaded with a hundred books, so the village dwellers can find, distribute, and learn to use them all on their own. This is a great cause, but there's like a 10% chance those tablets are going to be worshipped like gods. And then burnt. Yeah. And finally, the Japanese have a new plan in case of a catastrophic earthquake. Build a backup Tokyo. Codenamed the Integrated Resort Tourism Business and Backup City, the plan would include facilities for hundreds of thousands of residents and workers, an emergency government site, casinos, and a new skyscraper that would be the tallest in the world. A 1,300-acre site has already been set aside about 300 miles west of Tokyo. But hopefully that site is nowhere near Godzilla's nest. Ooh. I'm Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. Yay! Now back over to you guys. Dude, Thank you, Sarah Underwood. Neo Tokyo is oh going to be real. Two of them. Yes. Two I waited so long for those animes to come true. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, aside from that. I was waiting for your arm to full out Akira Bulge with excitement. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and here are some tips on using your iPhone. Yeah, or if you don't have an iPhone, here's some iPhone porn.
that iOS 5 has been out for a couple of weeks, we're going to show you how to pull off some useful tricks with your recently upgraded iDevice. First, it's time to do away with that old boring vibration alert we've all been using because now you can create your own custom vibrations. First of all, you need to enable them. Open up your settings, scroll down to general and tap that. Now tap accessibility and then flip custom vibrations from off to on. Now it's time to actually create some new buzzes. Go back out to settings again, but this time select sounds. Scroll down and tap on vibration at the bottom of the list. You can choose from one of the standard vibrations like heartbeat or symphony, or create a new vibration by giving it a little tappity tap tap in the middle of the screen. Congratulations, you've just made your first unique vibration. Make sure to save your new alert, then pull up your contacts and pick who you want to assign the new alert. Hit edit and scroll down to vibration. Tap on the alert of your choice and voila, you're all set. Now the next time your buddy Chris sends you a text, you'll know it's him, and you can ignore it without having to look at the screen. After you've created some fancy new alerts, you'll probably want to set up some text shortcuts that will make typing out full words a thing of the past. To get started, head back into your settings and select General. Then tap on Keyboard, scroll on down to the bottom and select Shortcuts. Here you'll find pre-existing acronyms like OMW or BRB. Add a new shortcut by tapping in the phrase you want it to say and the shortcut you'd like it to be tied to. For example, type in the phrase be right there with the shortcut BRT and save it. From now on, every time you type in BRT into your phone and hit space, your iDevice will automatically convert it into the correct phrase. Another clever use for text shortcuts is to use them for quickly inputting things like your email address or other stuff that you find annoying to constantly type in. And finally, you can kiss your cords goodbye thanks to the wonders of Apple's new Wi-Fi syncing. Start off by firing up iTunes on the computer you normally sync with and then plug in your iDevice. Click on the phone in order to reach its summary screen. Scroll on down to the options and check sync with this iPhone over Wi-Fi. Disconnect your phone from the computer and go into its settings. From there, click on general and again on iTunes Wi-Fi sync. From here, you're able to manually sync your device by clicking on sync now. If you'd rather not have to dig through menus in order to sync files, you can automatically initiate a sync by plugging your phone into a power source. While it can be a bit of a battery hog, once you have Wi-Fi sync up and running, you'll never want to go back to your old wired lifestyle from before. So go forth and impress your friends with your newly acquired iOS knowledge. And don't worry if they end up rolling their eyes at you, they're probably just jealous. Bomb Patrol Afghanistan, the team faces off against the Taliban trigger man who is remotely detonating IEDs, which is bad news for the guys because they're parked right on top of one. Ooh. Anywhere else. Bomb Patrol Afghanistan airs Tuesdays at 10 p.m. only on G4. Check out G4TV.com slash Bomb Patrol for more information. All right, stay tuned. Brett Ratner will be here live. Oh, my God. I think anything could happen during this interview. <laughs> I think. Fail. You're dead. Major fail. Fail. Oh. Fail, 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 fail. You lose. Now listen, here's the thing. Here, here's the problem I have. When I try stealing from the rich, it's a felony. When these guys do it, it's a comedy. <laughs> Parking enforcement office only works the west side of the street. You got a fat ass, too. All right, baby, I'll call you after lunch. I'm in a restaurant with Josh and a couple other guys across from the tower. Yeah, I love you. What are you doing? This is supposed to be a secret. I can't tell my wife I'm having a lunch. We're not having lunch. We're casing the front of the building. Now they can trace our steps back to us. Well, I didn't tell what restaurant we were at. You said the restaurant across from the tower. I didn't say which restaurant across from the tower. Jeez, a hamburger's $24. We can't afford to eat here anyway. Hey, we can order whatever we like. Go so. Lunch is on me. Please welcome Brett Ratner to the program, everybody. All right, let's get into it. Tower yeah. Heist. Four years in the making? Oh, my God. I mean, really more than that, because when I was 12, I was watching Eddie Murphy movies. Yes. Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills Cop, Cop. 100. Yeah. 48 hours. 
uh, trading places. It, oh, yeah. it was, uh, what shoddy parenting that you were watching I know, those right? movies at 12. <laughs> I, had a, I had a very cool mom. She let me do it. Yeah. And then, you know, after I, Rush Hour wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for Eddie Murphy because I studied those movies. Right. And I wanted to do a movie for 12 year olds for Chris Tucker that was like from when I was 12, what Eddie Murphy meant to me when I was 12. Absolutely. So it was literally a dream come true working with Eddie. It was incredible. But some people said that this is, uh, that this is Eddie Murphy's comeback, which yeah. he didn't really go anywhere. He just did a, he did Thank a different you. style I of mean, film. He, was, he got nominated for an Oscar for, for uh, Dream Girls. Right. And it's because he hadn't done a, an, a street character and in a was, long time. That was the thing. They want yeah. that raw Eddie Murphy back again. Exactly. And so, here it is. so did you feel, being such a fan, extra pressure that this would be his street Eddie character? I felt, you know, no, this I felt vehicle? like I knew. I mean, the, actually, the movie was Eddie's idea. So I actually knew going into it that he was so committed to this character and what it was going to be. And he just went for it. Mm -hmm. And having him you know, in a movie with Ben Stiller and Ferris Bueller, Okay, <laughs> and, and and Hawkeye from Mash yes. was like the coolest thing I've ever. It sounds uh, like you opened up the toy chest of your of your youth and just went, oh yeah, and exactly. then the A team rolls in. Exactly, and then yeah. Hawk, we need a big yeah. Hawk. Like, that's awesome. Uh, and co congrats on the viral marketing campaign. This whole Occupy thing, I thought it was just. I know. <laughs> we planned that whole thing. It Incredible. was crazy. Yeah, it was amazing. So are we, you going to extend it past the release, like at least to the DVD? We got to keep it going for a few weeks longer after the movie comes <laughs> out, because you know we don't want the public to really know that we're we're uh, tricking them. I mean, I know you said it was, you know, a little over four years in the making. Yeah. But when this stuff started happening and you started mm. seeing people taking to the streets, did, did you did you think, wow, oh, this this property speaks to that just a little bit? Yeah. Well, it's great to make a movie that's about something, but really we were trying to make a movie that was fun and entertaining. Right. We didn't know that the culture was going to come up to the to the movie, mm -hmm. and we. Uh, we're proud that, you know, we're, we're sorry about the, the people down on Wall Street having to suffer through this, but we're happy that it's really timely right now. You right. Know? Well, you give them a couple tickets. Exactly. Or, or give them a fan I, I offered to have a big good. screening for them down on, on Wall Street, but they weren't having it. No. Well, they, couldn't hear, <laughs> they couldn't hear you over the sounds of the tambourines exactly. and the drum circles. I'm sorry. Um, you're also producing the Oscars. Yes. Which, yeah. uh, congrats, by Thank the way. You. I mean, Thank you. But what's the, what's the Brett Ratner Oscar Oh, vision? man, it's going to be funny, that's for sure. I mean, I realized that the best hosts were comedians. Mm -hmm. And I said, I've been looking at a comedian for the past six months. Oh, I thought you were going to say for the past three months. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so what, cool. Who'd you have in mind? Yeah. So what better comedian <laughs> What better comedian than Eddie Murphy? But if, actually, if I ever do Beverly Hills Cop, you could be the Judge Reinhold character. Yes! For sure. <laughs> oh, my God! Yeah. Sign me up! <laughs> All right, now here's the issue that I have. Yeah. You seem like a, and I've only known you a, a few minutes. We yeah. chatted before the show. Yeah, yeah. You seem like a decent guy, Brett. Yeah, yeah. But things that I've read about you in a certain ex coworker's book of mine oh my would God. lead me to believe she, you might she, not be the nicest guy in the world. This is the truth. She, I used to date Olivia Munn. I'll be honest with everybody here. Okay. To, well, let's. But actually, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. When she, when she was Lisa, that was the problem. She wasn't Asian back then. Oh, this is before the transformation. Before the transformation. Yeah. She was hanging out on my set of After the Sunset. I banged her a few times, and I didn't really. Oh, sorry. Can I say that on this show? Oh, yeah. yeah, you just did. But yeah. I forgot her. I forgot that it... because she changed her name. I didn't. Re... This guy's giving me a dirty look. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was the same person. And so when she came and auditioned for me for a TV show, I forgot her. She got pissed off and she made up all these stories about me eating shrimp and masturbating in my trailer. So. <laughs> and my shortcomings. She talked about my shortcomings. So, yeah. <laughs> I get it. You know, she's she's bitter. To know? be fair, you did ask for shrimp cocktail in your I writer did. today. You I did. did ask for that. <laughs> Do we need to steam clean the green room? You tell yeah, us. Yeah, we need some wipes. To so wipe so down. so you are you are disputing the story then? At least as as, as it's Ugh. been printed. Because I hadn't read the book yet. I didn't see the story. I yeah. skimmed the pages looking for the part where she thanked me. So I didn't have anything to read. I had nothing. There's I, a... I, 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 I got to be honest. I didn't know I was in her book until. Your producer here handed this to me and said, is this you? And I realized it was me. All the details pointed that was was me. Right. And uh, she was hanging on my set for like three weeks. She made it like she had just, my assistant invited her down there. I lured her into my trailer. M the shrimp cocktail and my penis came out at the same time. <laughs> and I was like, this is crazy. What, what, who makes up stories like this? But it's you, unbelievable. You, you tweeted a few months back that you had photos. I do have some photos. What are these? Uh, what are these photos? They're photos of just her and I hanging out on the set as a happy couple, loving, nice couple. But I, you know, she forgot all that. Oh, know, that was so, <laughs> yeah. We had a certain no, no nudity, no nudity. No, no, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to hurt her at all. I, I think she's a lovely, nice girl. It's not the same girl that I met actually. Olivia and Lisa are two completely different girls. Just so you know. Got it. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I, no, no. And I was no hoping when I came here that I was going to bump into her. This is what's crazy. I was hoping to see her. I mean, you're much cuter anyway. So. I'm not <laughs> Stop <laughs> it.
<laughs> Someone get some cocktail sauce. <laughs> this interview's taking a turn. Um, I love Tower Heist. I'm holding you to that Beverly Hills Cop thing, Thank by the you, way. Man. Brett Ratner, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to just lie down and skip across the water face first? Yes. Yeah. No? What you say? Well, someone did, and they came up with the EXO. This battery-powered watercraft is made of lightweight carbon fiber or reinforced ABS plastics. Featuring a 7 kilowatt electric engine and a top speed of over 30 miles per hour, you'll have no problem cruising around like a waterlogged Superman. Unfortunately, you'll need to wait a little while as the EXO won't be available until summer of next year. But if you'd like your watercraft to live a double life and go on land as well, then check out the Sealander. Designed as a camper boat hybrid, this unique RV has a small outboard motor so you can drift around with or without the top down. At 12 feet in length, it can house a cooler, a heater, and even a cooking unit. You can order your piece of outdoorsy freedom for a little over 20,000 bucks. And finally, if you were a kid in the 70s and 80s, then listen up. The green machine is back. Based on the popular lime-colored tricycle from the 70s, this gas-powered beast comes equipped with a 60-horsepower engine, is totally ugly in my opinion, and a top speed of 50 miles per hour. Staying true to its inspiration, it's controlled by two push-pull levers that steer the rear wheels, allowing you to pull off some gnarly 180s. So go on, embrace your midlife crisis, and show those kids down the street who's boss for only 75,000 big ones. And you can, because you're an adult and they're kids and they have no money. <laughs> Suckers! Head on over to g4tv.com slash AOTS for info on all of these ridiculous rides and more. After the break, proof that not all men are created equal. I didn't know that one. Great moments in de-evolution is next. You ever feel like your magical and revolutionary iPhone is lacking a little, well, magic? Revisit the fantasy adventures of yesteryear with Mage Gauntlet, an old school 16-bit RPG that'll put magical powers at your fingertips. Step into the shoes of Lexi, a young woman who, with the help of the wizard Whitebeard, learns to wield powers with a magical gauntlet. The quest? Help Whitebeard contain Hergoth, an evil entity on the verge of escaping banishment from the Dark Realm. The top-down open world is reminiscent of classic Zelda and challenges the player to explore and master a wide range of weapons and spells to fend off the evil minions that stalk the land. Control Lexi by dragging a finger and wield her powers with a simple tap. Or you can maximize your power by holding the attack button. If that doesn't do the trick, open up her book of spells and lay waste to enemies with the help of good old-fashioned magic. With 42 levels, a huge book of spells, and multiple worlds to explore, the hours of gameplay make Mage Gauntlet well worth the $3 price tag. The scales of a dragon are harder than anything known to man. It's a fart. It's on... Coming up on Attack of the Show. Mickey Rourke will be here live with his villainous new role in the action movie, The Immortals. Then, the games of the year are here. We review Modern Warfare 3 and Skyrim on Game Break. Plus, The Wire's Michael Kenneth Williams will be here live with the latest on Boardwalk Empire and Community. Then, Blair Herder heads to SEMA, one of the world's largest auto shows held in Sin City. And John Cho will be here live to trip out about a very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas. See it starting Monday. Hey. Devers, assemble! Ooh, ooh, it's self clobbering time! Woo. There's a new standard in nut shots. Uh, just hurting yourself, it's not enough anymore, right? Kids want more. It is not. That's right, these days it takes two to do the gentle crushing tango. Oh. Oh! 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 
<laughs> GoPro is gonna have to make a special like taint attachment just so you can put the high def camcorder right there to capture the crush. I love the multiple camera angles. They really put some thought They're into that. They're all producing it. I like it. Well, this week's rating system is ice cream trucks slash ambulances because every American deserves health care and delicious ice cream. That's why. Yeah. How many are we giving them? Three out of five. Oh, three. three. Giving some room there? Three out of five. Okay. We've seen a lot of fire breathing fails in Diev before. Mm -hmm. And here's another one because these morons never seem to learn. <laughs> on his face matches the burning it smells in the like genitals. Burning. Yeah. The ability to land a backflip <laughs> is a sign of pure athleticism and agility. But the same cannot be said about landing on your face. Three, two, one. Oh! You okay? That thin tarp was there to break his Why face. Why are all these idiots wearing plaid? Oh, this is a dangerous day to say that in this studio. I Where's know. the plaid? <laughs> plaid hunt! Plaid, plaid hunt! hunt. No. Plaid no. 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 no! Oh, there's a man in plaid! <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, they seriously all wear plaid. They really do. Uh, how many are we gonna give that guy? I say we give him a five out of five! Have to, have to just for the plaid. Hey, we salute those who self-sacrifice for self-mutilation. Total bunch of morons, I tell you. Yeah. It's pathetic. So very quickly, uh, big show today. Very Huge big. show today. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the last show for one of our brothers in arms. Uh, uh, an amazing friend that I made over the, how long have you been here? What's your name? Brian, three years? Um, <laughs> Brian's been with us three years and not only has he been one Yay! hell, one hell of an amazing friend, an incredible coworker. Uh, he inspires me not just in the office, but with his personal life as well. And I won't reveal the details, but they're gorgeous. Um, I did, however, want to give his new co-workers at the job he's heading to a little something to razz him about. So very quickly, take a look at this. What? Oh. Yeah. Fuck it! <laughs> Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it! <laughs> that was a Darth Maul happy birthday candygram guy scaring the crap out of Brian. Take your victory lap, Brian, to 